<laughs> now, the next segment is Roddy Piper and Vince Russo, of which uh, you missed on the initial watch, but you're now going to watch yeah. now and then going to pause it and then we're going to come back one sec. Okay, and as if by magic, I've turned up with a hoodie on. I'm sorry, I was cold. Uh, <laughs> so, we uh, just watched the Roddy Piper, Vince Russo confrontation there again. And I'll tell you what, Vince Russo is one thing, but Roddy Piper is definitely another. And tell you what, they don't make him like that anymore, do they? No, no. I I, would, I don't know if you saw, as I was sitting there watching. I was watching your face throughout. <laughs> they just go, you're craning yeah, I was... enjoying it. Yeah, I was like my my eyes were welling up because hey, I miss him. But B, like, you look at it, you, go, you know, man, you know, they I have no inkling on what the backstory to any of this is, but my guess is that none of that stuff would have been said if it were a shoot, right? Uh, <clears throat> because if it were. Roddy would have been right out there on Russo. Uh, I think Roddy at that point of his career, you know, knew what the reputation was and knew what was being said. And I figured, how can we take this and turn this, you know, dog stuff into dog shine. And, uh, you know, that's what he was so brilliant at, but his delivery in that, the inflection. And the reason I say that is because through there, he's doing the Roddy Piper voice, right? There's a, his real voice is very was different from that, different inflection, and when you see him making that delivery and the passion behind it, regardless of what was said before that, what would happen before that, this guy's dripping money, right? I mean, listen to the fans, and you just you're mesmerized by it. It's you know, it's like in, in the cartoons when you you, know, you see the odor of like the. The apple pies in the oven, and, the water, and here comes you know Fred Flintstone floating through the air to the to the you know that's Roddy Piper to those of us in this business. Um, but you know Russo's delivery too, I was 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 poignant and, and sharp. You know he he was reflecting the the commonality of what was being said at that time. And you know to me again, that's uh, knowing none of the backstory. It tells me that there was uh, there's a thing called work shoot. Right. So we're going to uh, we're going to go out there and you, know, you say we don't have to plan it here. You you take your biggest dig at me and I'm going to fire back at you and let's not get angry about it you know, because it's you know, it's not going to be personal. And, you know, like when you know the comment about the kids and stuff, when Russo makes the comment, I don't care if your kids starve, they put the camera on Roddy. And look at the and understand in our business we're taught to emote because it's big arena and you're playing to thousands of people at times. There is such a subtle twinge in his face that comes on. That's great acting. Mm-hmm. That's you know because the camera's going to pick up every one of those nuances. <clears throat> the guy in the last row didn't didn't catch that little wince of a change in his face, but the camera on him and him present enough present of mind enough to know that that camera's on him at that point and he does it and then he holds it for a second in case the camera hadn't caught it get it now get it now get the tail end of it um <laughs> you know there's times you start to think okay i got pretty good at this business man you see something like that and go Phew. okay i'm a jv guy that's uh wow let me go through <clears throat> what the actual promo was. I'm sorry we couldn't show it all because it was just far too long. I mean, it would have been yeah, yeah. great just to see us watch it, but uh, or, or, you know, Shane watch it at least. Now, Mike's out, Scotland Brave plays Roddy Piper, saunters out for a Piper's pit. Now, I'm going to explain what he's referring to at the beginning uh, in a minute, but Piper says he's not crazy, quotes Rudyard Kipling, and that this is as real as real gets, and he straddles the line between fantasy and reality. Piper declares he's got NWA in his blood, talks family, talks drugs, didn't come here to be a nice guy, says the promoter who put the clip of his HBO comments, which I'll refer to in a minute, on the internet as a piece of shit. Piper doesn't... I actually wrote this, Piper doesn't look as well as he would do at certain times as well, but uh, we'll refer to that in a minute as well because that's going to play into the uh, previous paragraph I'm going to read. Vince Russo walks down to the ramp, stands on the announcer's table, looking sad. 
Piper says he made a mistake not beating him up. Russo says Piper ripped his heart out and alludes to the Owen Hart comments that Piper made the last time they went face-to-face in an NWA TNA ring where Roddy Piper says, you killed Owen Hart. Uh, Russo says that he's in TNA. Right, this is the one thing that's wrong. Russo says that Roddy Piper's in TNA because no one else will have him. Which hardly yeah. makes TNA yeah, seem right. like the <laughs> most amazing place to be. Anyway, yeah. um, it's the sort of this town ain't big enough for the both of us and says that if Russo goes, AJ Styles goes as well. Now, Roddy Piper, at the beginning of this promo, starts referring to clip on the internet. His son comes up to him and says, Daddy, you're a drug addict. Now, this refers to an appearance he made on Real Sports with Brian Gumbel, uh, HBO show. Uh, Roddy talked about his past drug use in wrestling and he predicted he would not be living past the age of 65. And mm. a prediction that sadly would become prophetic because he would make it to 61 before passing mm-hmm. away in 2015. Do you remember, because he was fired from the WWE for those comments and then shortly beforehand he ends up in TNA, but what do you remember of that time in Roddy's life with him coming back to TNA as well? Well, you know, Roddy had this thing where he would, and it had been years since I'd been around him at the, at this time frame. But you know, you know, telephone, telegraph, tele wrestler. <clears throat> these are the things that you know when you're paid to hear about this or hear about that. Um, you know, there was, and Roddy throughout the time that I knew him, he looked great back when I first met him. Then he went to that period where he bloated up a bit, <clears throat> and. Then you start to see him in like these type of segments and you can see like, okay, well, he's getting older, but it, it, like you said, he didn't look like at his healthiest. And, but then like after this, you'd see him get like back into shape. And then like a year or two later, you'd see him, you know, the jacket be a little bit tighter. Uh, that was Roddy up and down through that time. And I never, ever, when I was around Roddy would ever broach any kind of subject like that we would talk about things Roddy would bring up. If I had a question, it was something to what we were doing right now. Uh, none of my business, you know, and I, and, you know, I think I, having learned from, like watching these guys and coming up in that, uh, you know, when Connor was born, there was a conscious effort by us to, uh, to not have photographs taken of Connor, uh, to have him around the, like if he was around the wrestling, if he went to a show with me or whatever, there was never a picture of me holding him or whatever. We'd keep that distant because we didn't want, and the world's full of crazy more today, but there was crazy people then too. And, you know, somebody maybe seeing a little bit more, you know, John Lennon got shot by one of his num- number one fans. Right. And so, you know, you, <laughs> you, you've gone out and you said things about flair and Shawn Michaels and Vince and Hogan and whoever, uh, <clears throat> Is somebody going to take it out of my kids? So, you know, Roddy, he he knew exactly where to straddle that line. He was brilliant with that. You know, where to bring it right up to that point that would allow him to tap into those emotions and seemingly not go over it. Now, a lot of this kind of stuff, like in hindsight, playing it back and watching it, I'm not so sure I would have this or that. But he's, at this time, the dirt sheets are really, you know, starting to catch on and and have by then. Uh, so like he's alluding to in the, in the, in the promo, uh, uh, we've seen this and now whether his son ever came and said that to him, who knows? Uh, but you know, his life's in turmoil and you could see, well, you can read between the lines. Was he at this time using, not using yes, no six months ago? Yes. Now, no, we don't know. So like we're chopping in between that and trying to place these pieces into the right place. Roddy, to me, looks and and talking about his kids and his kids being brought into this. The reason I think Roddy would have done that is not to cheaply use his kids as props or, you know, material for a promo. But something happened there, you know, and and to him, that makes it real and allows him then to tap into those emotions. Whether it was his wife asked him. A friend asked him, he can then imbue that to his son and then now make this thing seem really personal. Uh, maybe it was his son. I'm not going to say it was or wasn't. But the whole point is, is like, as you're watching this, like, I'm thinking, you know, when he says the line, yeah, you wanted real, well, I'm going to give you as real as real gets. 
that to me is like the, the work shoot. Okay. I'm going to tell you this cause I've never said this before. And that puts everybody on guard. Like I would say, you know, shooting, right. It's, uh, uh, and it, it, it exposes a nerve just enough that allows him to tap into it, but it also allows the foil to play off of it. When you're with somebody like Roddy, cause he was so close to vest like that. Roddy didn't come and say, okay, we're going to do a promo. I'm thinking like, I'm going to say this stuff. And you say this back. And it wasn't like that. It was, you respond to my stuff and I'll respond to your stuff. <clears throat> that in watching that again, the mastery of it, <clears throat> but I, I would love to find out th the real backstory to it. Like what really did happen at that point, him being fired over that, that would, you know, allows him to pull it in. But those guys that were always great, very few great to that level, but were able to do that. They would pull something in just close enough to the line where it would make perfect sense to somebody. It could be the biggest work in the world, but then they would say, well, you know, he's talked about his family in the past or, you know, everybody knows he's been fired. What, it, it, without being in that moment and knowing exactly where we are in this timeline that would be the interesting thing to me to watch this but i sense it, as best you can with a guy that's as phenomenal as roddy is doing that kind of thing uh that the the involvement of his children uh the the comment of your don't care if your kids starve uh the re you can hear it in the wrestling fans you know there's that bit of a swell coming like, Ooh, that's not the right thing to say to him you know and and bringing it in, which which tells me at least a little birdie in my ear that this is Roddy pulling strings, uh, knowing how how close to play to that, and would love to talk to Kitty sometime and ask her, her what was her take at this time, because if you're coming that close, you know when you're in the in, in a back and forth like this in front of a live audience, once something is said and the cameras are rolling, you can't oh, 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 hold on, let's back up, let's drop that line out, let's say this line instead. You know, it, it, without question, there would have had to have been times where his family, his loved ones would have thought, like, oh, that's a little bit too close to home. You know, it's, uh, but boy, the mastery of it and the delivery. So like, what's, give me the, give me what else you're going to say with it. Because oh, I'm, nothing. I'm sort of sucked in right now. No, 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 uh, nothing with it. I was actually going to follow up with a question about Vince Russo. What do you think of him purely as an on-screen talent? He knows what to do, right? I mean, his, his delivery there, the, his timing, he's allowing the crowd to get in, giving it time to breathe. He's, you know, they're not stepping on each other. Like, so semantically, <clears throat> and Vince knows this, you know, we're good friends, but uh, there's things that he did in his booking that I would, wouldn't do, uh, things that I, I wouldn't go to. Um and, you know, and quite frankly, I'm sure if I was booking somewhere, he'd probably come and say, I would have done it that way. I would have tried it like that. that like some like chocolate, some like vanilla. Um, but on camera, he's he's good on camera. He knows where to, and good in a different way. Like Paul Heyman is very much more like a wrestling promo delivery guy. I think Russo comes off more like the the office guy that's standing his ground. And I don't get the sense that when I'm watching him, okay, well, Roddy's great. And then when Vince starts to talk, it's, it's more of a work. It, 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 he's, he's holding his own on stage as much as you can with a guy like Roddy Piper. Hmm. Vignettes with, I mean, because we just both watched it then. It's an intense thing to watch, quite frankly, but it's one of Very. those things where I just think, God, with Roddy Piper, no one today can even hold you know, they're not in the same league as Piper no. in something mm -hmm. like that. Not even the best talkers are, and that's a shame. Yeah, and they, and they can do 9,000 more moves three times as fast as he could do them. Mm -hmm. uh, Roddy in, in the ring, with, with my little two cents for what it's worth, Roddy wasn't the greatest catch-as-catch-can wrestler, right? I mean, he, you know, but... But again, when you're watching, because he's so compelling on this level of it, and like you'd said last episode, that's the the buildup, right? The buildup is what makes it. And uh, he said the line in there, you know, I'm, I'm the guy that made 
you know, put WrestleMania on the map. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, if you know that whole story, you know, Vince is borrowing money from the mob and everything else, uh, which just two cents thrown in here, uh, which makes it all that more ignominious. What Vince does to him later when he sends him out, his music's playing, he gets 10 yards to the curtain and he stops his music. You know, that's, that's chicken shit. That's podunk, you know, but if you just see just some kind of little dig to, to be a dig. And when somebody does for you like that, uh, anybody that really understands the industry knows that Piper was the oil that made that WrestleMania engine go. Hogan was the personality, but that personality is only going to get over as far as that foil pushes him over. And uh, if you've borrowed a bunch of bucks from the, from the, 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 the loan shark people, you know, and, and don't pay that back, bad things could have happened. So whatever personal differences you have aside, you know, if, 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 if in Vince's world, he considers himself a businessman, I'm sure he does. Then you need to separate the personal from the business. Right. And to do that to someone like Roddy is just, again, so ju ju you can't say junior varsity because that does a disservice to junior varsity. It's, it's, uh, it's not worthy of a talent as prodigious as Roddy Piper. Mm -hmm.